Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now is the GOAT. That's actually what I call him whenever he calls or we speak on the phone. What up, GOAT? Seven-time Pro Bowler, nine-time All-Pro, which means the media liked him. He was most recently on the Houston Texans. He was a mainstay on the Raiders for a long time with Janikowski. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm saying this. He's going to be the second punter inducted into the Hall of Fame. Absolute living legend for the brand, Shane. Old ass Leckler. Oh, thanks, Pat. <laughs> Did you enjoy that? I had to sneak in that old ass in there because that's exactly what you are. You're old I heard as, it. Yeah, you're old as balls. What are you up to these days, man? Houston Texans went with a rookie instead of the old grizzled vet. What are you up to now? No, nah, you know, just kind of, I mean, I'm still punting a little bit during the week. Uh, you know, not, not the kicking schedule that they had me on it's pretty much like once maybe twice a week and that's it and uh just trying to stay ready in case anybody needs somebody later on the year like around thanksgiving <laughs> so you're just sending out a you just sound that heads up to everybody by the way uh if you're thinking about making a playoff run it's a little bit later in the season old shane lecker will be ready to go so you are still going to keep at it yeah i am i'm not gonna you know kind of talk to the wife and uh kids and stuff i'm not gonna retire until you know probably after the super bowl uh just because i mean i spent the entire all season program did all that you know all the running all the lifting never missed a day you know and all through training camp i feel like that would be a waste if i just threw it away right now so i'm just gonna stay you know prepared as much as much as i need to and uh you know i'll listen to any phone calls anybody send out any feelers to shane leckler uh, no, not really. I know there's a couple of teams that kind of, um, after watching the first week, Steelers. I think there's a couple of teams that may need someone. Uh, will you pick and choose where you go? Will it be a good situation? The Pittsburgh Steelers fans tweet me every single time Jordan Berry goes <laughs> on the field to come out. I'm assuming there's some other spots that you've looked at after watching the first week. Will you pick and choose? I've had, uh, I'm not on Twitter at all, but I've heard those. Uh, exact words. So, <laughs> either if you're going to come out of retirement or I'm going to go up there, maybe, I don't know, whatever's going on with that. Um, how are you feeling? How is the body? Towards the end of last year, did your leg get tired, and was it the first time in your long, very historic and incredible career, did you feel like you still had it at the end of the year last year, or are you feeling just like your mid-30s, early 30s still? Well, you know, like towards the end of the year, you know, I was, I was kind of pressing to kind of make another Pro Bowl there. And I ended up at Wolf Avenue, a little over 49. And uh, and I was like, you know what, let's go out and swing hard, you know, each time. And let's redline a few of these and see what happens. And then I was, you know, I was just kind of chasing another Pro Bowl. We were 2-14. and 14. I mean, so I was a little bit, I guess you would say selfish in a sense. But, you know, I was kind of trying to get back to the Pro Bowl one more time. And then, uh, you know, I felt great going, you know, through the last part of the season. I hit a lull there in the middle, man. I just, it was just like, you know, you start losing so many games. And you're like, Jesus, I can't, you know, shake this. You know, it starts bugging you in the locker room. And on an everyday basis, you know, driving in every morning, you're like, shit, you know, what is he going to say today? <laughs> you know, I'm tired of hearing we're so close. We're so close. No, we're not. We're 2-10. You know, so, um, I'm just, you know, I, I just – would say you know i was ready to go another year for sure especially coming off of last year i mean i was second or third or whatever in gross average i never thought i'd be beat out by a rookie so you feel you felt very good going into the year this year is another pro bowl something that'll help you with closure with your career i mean you've accomplished literally everything you could accomplish as a punter you had a lot no the only thing would be the only thing to be straight honest with you pat the only reason i'm still playing this game to win a super bowl that's it that's the only reason your dick is a lot bigger when you have a Super Bowl. Right? <laughs> hey, I agree. <laughs> uh, you live in Houston full time. You've got a chance to go back home there. That's why you left the Raiders. How is life in Texas and in Houston at the moment? It's good. Uh, we're getting a shitload of rain right now, man. This is ridiculous. And then we got something else about to kick up in the Gulf. So, I don't know. Hopefully it's not a hurricane. And um, I know that people up in North Carolina, South Carolina, are probably about to go through what we had to go through last year. So, you know, I know what they're about to go through. It's going to suck for a few months. Uh, you're a stay-at-home dad now, kicking every once in a while? What are you doing? You're just a stay-at-home dad? You're yeah, just... now I went, up work, I went up and worked with the uh, the high school kids the other day, went fun with those guys. And, uh, 
man, that's different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dang, those coaches were screaming at those kids for no reason. I was like, geez, I don't know how you guys put up with this. But, uh, you know, I went out working with, with the kids up there and uh, you know, got a report back that the first punt the kid hit was like 46 yards, uh, fair caught inside the 10. I was like, dude, just skip college. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at the Texans, Bill O'Brien was there. Deshaun Watson comes in. Dabo Swinney called him the Michael Jordan of football, basically. When you were there, you got a chance to witness a lot of things happen. I mean, you've been in the league a long time. You've seen the rules change. You've seen the media change. You've been through a couple CBAs. You've been there, done that with everything. Do the Houston Texans have a legit team if they can keep it together down there? I think they do. Uh, you know, Deshaun was one of the first quarterbacks, unless you date all the way back to my rookie year, my first two years in the league, where we had Rich Gannon, who was league MVP. God, you are but so fucking Deshaun old. Deshaun is the yeah. first guy that I've ever, even down 14 or 10, going into the fourth, you never felt out of it. Never felt out of a game with Deshaun at quarterback. And, you know, Dabo can say what he wants to about the Michael Jordan deal. I think um, that's, a, that's a big shoe to fill, but I, you know, I think they got what they need at the quarterback situation. Is J.J. Watt a superhuman for real, or what is he? Ah, man, dude. I'm waiting for him to mess up, dude. (laughs) Do something wrong. (laughs) Because there's no possible way you're this good a guy and football player constantly. But, um, you know, he's one of my really good friends on the team. Matter of fact, when I signed with uh, with the Texans out of Oakland, he was the first guy to reach out to me. We've been friends ever since, and the whole time I'm like, dude, you, something's going to happen. Something's going to come out because there's no way you're this perfect. Yeah, he's like Tim Tebow without all the corniness. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And he's good. Exactly. And he's really good. Um, you told me the other day on the phone that you and Cushing just kind of hang out. What's Cushing up to? How are you guys boys? What do you do, drink beers? What does Cushing do? No, man, we – um. You know, we go bow hunting a lot down at uh, – I got at least some land uh, not far from my house right now, and we go bow hunting and hang out down there at the property a lot. And do shit like that. I mean, Kush, I got Kush into bow hunting about a year ago, and now he's probably as addicted to that as you can get. So, um, you know, we're just waiting for Vinatieri to give us a call to go up to his place he's got now. <laughs> Dude, he's making bank off of that too. It's like a country club for freaking the hunters up there. Yeah, I know. So that'd be a good place to do our next show in person. <laughs> oh, yeah. You think it, I'll send a text over to Vinny. I'm sure if I drop your name in there, he'll give it up for free for me. He's trying to charge me triple. <laughs> um, the NFL is in a weird place right now. Weird place. PR wise, uh, the game wise, ratings wise, politic wise. The NFL is in such a weird place, Shane. What's the future of the NFL? Man, I don't – I, to be honest with you, I don't like what I see because never in a million years would I thought – now, granted, I live here in Houston. Would I thought baseball would climb in front of the NFL as far as entertainment-wise? But granted, I'm watching the Astros, you know, every night they're on. And – but I don't – man, it's kind of – it's getting to be a point of annoying or disgusting at the same time. Yep. Um I don't know. I don't know any other word to put for it because that's supposed to be the best game ever played, and right now there's a bunch of stuff going on that is just not the game anymore. It's not how when you came in the league. It's not how it was. It's damn sure not how it was when I came in the league. So um, you know, I don't know. It's kind of it's frustrating because it's such a great sport, and it's one of the few sports that it takes all 11 on the same page at the same time to make one thing work. And uh, and right now there's so many distractions on what's going on off of it and with everything. It's just, you know, whenever they called me in and they kind of released me and I, I drove home, I was like, well, it's not the game I started playing. But um, it's still a great game, but it's got some issues. Was it an amicable split between you and the Texans? It was strange, man. It was it was a weird deal because, of course, I'm I'm never been through it, and so now I can say I've done everything except win a Super Bowl. <laughs> but um, I I got called in. I was at the house. I was expecting a phone call, so I get called in, and I was literally in the building less than seven minutes. Wow. 
Oh, and hand over your iPad, hand over your fob to get in. I didn't even go to my locker. I told the equipment guy, bag my shit up, send it to my house. <laughs> I'm going to go I meet with a coach. I didn't. They knew what my iPad was. It, it's never been turned on. I just took the charger because I did. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's it. My iPad is sitting where it was the day they gave it to me. Um, will you... You're a legend of the game. Whenever you're the greatest of all time at a position, you're a legend of a game. That's what you are. Will you try to be a guy that influences the future of the NFL or whenever you're done with it, after you sail off after this Super Bowl, will you just kind of disappear forever? Or will you be a guy who's around, whether it's with the NFL PA or the NFL or anything like that? No, nah, I don't see myself doing anything like that. Um, you know, I'm not going to disappear from the game because this is a game that I grew up loving my dad from from the day of, my dad won a state championship the day the year i was born as a high school football coach he coached for 18 years and then i go on to college and i've never been away from this game ever until right now this is the first time i've been away from it since day one and i don't see myself leaving it i definitely see myself helping out some of these high schools around here and um i don't know janikowski texted me the other day and want to know if we want to do a kicking camp, um, you know, starting whenever he retires or he's done. And I was like, you know what? There's a lot of guys getting paid to coach these punters or do these camps that have zero credibility. And they're getting paid a whole lot of money to do this. And yeah, I, yeah. I thought, you know, that's not a bad idea by, you know, Janikowski to go and see if we can do some camps across the country and um, maybe do that or maybe not do anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. We teach them kick, we get money, we drink. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite comments. He looks good in that uniform, didn't he? Did, did uh, you see him? Oh yeah. I, oh, I saw him, dude. He <laughs> he. The Polish cannon is in full force right now in Seattle. Yeah, love that guy. Uh, my I do too. My favorite conversation I've ever had in my entire life. We played against you and Janikowski up there, and I was in the substance abuse policy. Uh, substance abuse program because of what happened with me. And Janikowski walks up to me, thanks me for taking the heat off his back for being the drunk kicker. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, and then I'm like, man, they're not letting me do anything. And Janikowski goes, go on cruise. What are they going to do, land on boats? No. <laughs> exactly what he used to do, too, man. The season would end, he was like, hey, I'm going to be on a cruise with him. Uh, you're an absolute legend, man. Absolute legend. I hope you find a good home uh, to finish your career out. You've done so much for so many punters. I used to watch your film every single week when I was learning how to punt. I was just trying to be you, man. You're uh, you're an absolute legend. If you ever do those camps with Janikowski, I'd love to get involved too, teach these kids how to bomb some balls. Sounds good, man. I, you'll be the first guy I call because I'm not going to have too many punters in there, so just kind of ain't all right. Yeah. Me and you, that's it. We'll shut this down right there. <laughs> I, I like that. Maybe we bring in a couple rookies too, take both of our jobs and keep it moving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen, a future Hall of Famer, absolute legend, guy that taught me how to kick balls basically by watching his film. Uh, guy who I hope gets on a team too. By the way, seven weeks on a team, six weeks on a team, that leg's going to be jumping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll be ready. I mean, uh, you know, like, like I said, it, the, the kicking schedule we had in camp and uh, OTAs and mini camp, man, that was absolutely brutal. I really felt like a rookie again. I was like, all right, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to kick me out of the game. So there's and, no uh, respect, huh? You, you felt good, you felt kind of disrespected, I assume. Oh, yeah. I don't like that at all, by the way. But, I want to let you know that I don't like that you felt that way. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, but you've done a lot for the fucking game. It comes to a point where it's like, hey, some people be who you can afford to be. When you're Shane Leckler, you can be who you can afford to be. You are the guy. I want you to know that. I don't like that. I hope you find a new home kick somewhere. The game needs you, brother. I appreciate you so much, and thanks for coming on, Shane. All right. Take care, Pat. Appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, Shane Leckler. <laughs> Thank you, Shane. Yeah, bro. Hey, you're Later. the hey. You're really good at talking. By the what? way, you're really good at talking. You should think about doing this in uh, the future if it ever happens. Uh, all right, we'll talk about it at Vinny's deal, so just go ahead and get that lined up. <laughs> You're an idiot. I'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> See ya.